So, God is in the circle of inapproachable light. Can somebody bring a chair to me? A small chair, quickly. No, just don't step it. So, okay, just see. They'll bring it. I want to show you something. Tell your neighbor, he's about to show you something. Tell your neighbor, he's about to show you something. So if God does not live in heaven and he lives in the sake of inapproachable light, what is the purpose of the throne? And that's what John was shown. I saw a throne. He saw a throne. First he saw a throne. Because all heaven has is not all of God, just his throne. But the way God built his throne is technology at his highest level. He put crystals, emeralds, sadas, or crystals. Do you know what scientists are saying about crystals today? Scientists are now saying crystals are the breakthrough engine to the next technology. That's why they are working so hard on AI. Because there is something beyond AI coming. To you it's a new technology. To God is an ancient mystery. They are saying now that crystals, crystals. By the way, if you can, if you can have an emerald mine in the next few years, emeralds will be more valuable than gold and diamonds. But wait, 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 wait. They are saying the stones on the throne. That's those stones are the next breakthrough technology to hologram technology. Hologram technology is the ability if I have your image and I have enough light and I beam your image on crystals a form of yourself who appear. That's why John says, I saw the throne. Then I saw one. One meaning somebody who looks like God reflected on the throne but he's not there. <laughs> so from the circle of inapproachable light, God beams himself because there is enough light on the throne and the form of God appears. But even that form of God has so much energy you still need an altar to approach. Somebody shout altar, altar. Shout altar, altar. No, leave it, brother. I'm not done. Watch out something. I'm teaching on altars from. Do you want me to continue? <sighs> That's why the Bible says, O Lucifer. Because Come here, brother. Lucifer was the attendant. The, ma the main attendant to the altar. That was before the throne. And so, he was the closest to the crystals. So when the light bounced from the crystals, he began to shine more. And then because of the energy of the crystals, 
he began to he began to admire himself. And in one service, he, he came to the altar. And the God who lives in approachable light already knows he has corrupted his wisdom by the reason of his beauty. Because what does God know? He saw, beheld by the throne. He now sees himself on it. He says you have corrupted your wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you how can you fight a God in heaven who is not there? <laughs> oh my God! How can you fight a God in heaven who is not really there? He's just manipulating crystals. <laughs> but Lucifer was so taken by the light of the crystals because every time worship was over and he turned to look at the entire congregation of angels they were blinded by his light the angels fell back too much light and Lucifer thought look at my anointing the light from the crystals passing through him we are so powerful he managed to convince one third of the angels that he could be God are you with me somebody is somebody catching this but what was Satan's desire our send our send from where from my priesthood at the altar and I'll sit on the throne I'll will ascend and then I'll sit on the throne and I'll be like God Satan has never given up the desire to be like God. Well, one of the ways a man, a creature, can be like God is to make a demand on other creatures that God made on Lucifer before he fell. And the demand God made on Lucifer, he could only approach God through the altar. So now when you are Satan, and you've set up your own kingdom, you won't, you, you will not allow Vashinyanga. You won't allow witches. You won't allow Buddhist monks to come and touch you directly because you are demanding to be like God. So you are going to insist since your desire is to be like the other one. My kingdom must also have altars. Because I shall be like the most high. If men cannot approach him without altar, how dare they approach me without an altar? So every religion, Hinduism, Islam, has to have altars to approach Lucifer. <laughs> Everyone, Krishna, everybody, must have an altar. 
Mas a nova anota. That's why altars are so powerful. If you don't understand that, you, do, you won't understand the power of destroying an evil altar. Because Satan is so proud. If the altar is destroyed, he won't meet with them. Today we are going to shut down the altars of people in your family that are attending to the evil altars that are keeping the activity of Satan alive in your life. Today, you shall be delivered in a powerful way. But then I'm going to teach you how to raise an altar that speaketh for your family. How to raise an altar that speaketh that when you have that altar it will fight your battles. It will pay your bills. It will entertain the most high. So what is an altar? Write down the definition I'm about to give to you. And then we'll, we'll transition to our second service. And I'll give you the 12 laws. Write down this definition of the altar. Never forget it. Because this altar, this altar, ah, Jesus. Write down the definition. What is an altar? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Let's write it, this one together. Write this one down. Say it with me as you write it. We'll write it. If we, can do, we can do two things at the same time. Speak and write at the same time. Write this one down. An altar is a supernatural landing strip. An altar, An altar is a supernatural landing strip, comma, a power station, a power station, comma, a consecrated place, a consecrated what, comma, a place of exchange. A place of what? Comma. A place of sacrifice. A place of what? Comma. A table of fellowship. Comma. A place where covenants are made and sustained. Say with me. A place where covenants are made and sustained. 
period. Put a foot stop. But we continue. It's, now say, it's a spiritual platform. Say with me. It's a spiritual platform where spirits where spirits now put in brackets now in bracket God comma angels or demons then close the brackets and then after that is the word land so in other words it will read like this it's a spiritual platform where spirits God, angels, or demons land. Full stop. Then we continue. It's where humanity meets with divinity. It's where humanity meets with what? Divinity. That is an altar. Now we can do it's a, an altar is like an airport. It's a supernatural landing strip. How many planes can you get in any city? If there is no airport. None. They'll circle around. They'll fly over. But there is no landing strip. How many planes can you land once you have an airport? Many. Different types. Because now you have an airport. An altar is a supernatural landing strip for spirits. So a righteous altar operates like a landing strip for the spirit of God and every celestial being in light. That's why angels in the Bible would appear where there was an altar. Gabriel appeared to the altar when he spoke to Zechariah. Because it was the only place he, he could meet with Zechariah on legal grounds. That's why Jesus, when he went to the temple, his favorite spot was to sit by the altar because he wanted to see the exchanges men were making with the altar. He would read their levels of spirituality by how they dealt with the altar. The altar is so important. Satan wants altars because he wants a place to land. The altar is the only way spirits can enter this world in, on legal grounds. That's why when we raise the altar, a new altar today, they get ready for supernatural events like never before. I will tell you miracles that have happened to people. When they have raised altars correctly, what I believe that God wants your heart to be an altar, but there's power in having an external altar because there's something about an external altar that will convict you faster than anything else that you are becoming too busy and you are beginning to diminish your attendance to the Lord because the altar calls that's why we get the altar calls 
I'm very busy in America with TV, all kind of stuff. Sometimes I get so caught up. But because in every house or office we have an altar. The more I pass by the altar, inevitably, there comes a time when I feel guilty that in my busyness I haven't been there. I stop everything and I enter and voila, the glory descends. I meant to be there for 15 minutes. One hour, two hours, I'm coming out. Whoa. And the instructions I get will blow you. We have to raise altars. Lift your hands and pray in tongues right now. Stephen. Pray. Do you know the song? Come to the altar. By elevation. Can you call Titus? Catch quick as one call Titus. Pray, pray, pray. Something supernatural is happening. We're about to begin to pray, pray. She cut up that. Thank you, Peter. Don't sing, just play instrument. What do you do? Pray, pray. Something supernatural is happening. Many of you have been convicted by the Lord for not attending to the altar. Speak. Many of you have been convicted by the Lord for not attending to the altar. You become so busy chasing the quatra and how to make it. You do not know that you are first employed by the altar, then everything else second. The alt, you, you, oh my, you, the, you can pay your bills by job or by altar. I pay my ministry bills not by job, not by ministry engagements. I found brother. That I can pay my bills by altar. God is touching people. There will be a reconsecration of the altar. In people's lives. Come and pray. God is, the glory of the Lord is descending. The glory of the Lord is descending. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, pray. Ask the Lord to give you a new fire. Tell the Lord the fire on this altar will never run out. Come on, tell the Holy Spirit that the fire on this altar will never go out. Tell the Holy Spirit, I am so sorry. I am so sorry that I've been distracted so much that I've neglected the altar.
In America, there is a church called Elevation Church. And they have done many songs. One of my favorite songs is Come to the Altar. Because I should have died in 1989. I was so sick. When I came to Maranatha, I weighed about 100 pounds. Boils all over my face. I was 18 and I was dying. And then Bishop Skybanda preached. And he says, Come to the altar. I had no idea the infrastructure in the spirit. I was approaching. I had no idea that one invitation come to the altar would lead to my first, 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 to my first, first to face encounter with Jesus. That one come to the altar would follow me all the way to America. All the way to Nigeria, the islands, and bring me right back to where it all began. One statement come to the altar. I asked my guys to find the song. It's gonna, it's gonna play, and you guys home, we need to learn the song. Learn it very, very well. So if I ever need it, you, you are there. But thank God for technology. Please play the song, Come to the Altar. And I'm going to quickly change into a, a different shirt. As soon as I come back, we'll start, we'll start breaking family altars. It's going to be very powerful. Just lift it up.
Come on, stand up. You can see to this song. Only is well under singing. Christ is risen. What a savior. Isn't he wonderful people who can take a small boy from Chimwemwe and give him a voice around the world? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? What can he not do with you if you simply say yes? Hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor and tell them his reason. Tell them his reason and they pass through the heavens. Tell them his reason. This side, everyone this side. Tell them, tell your neighbor his reason. And you pass through the heavens. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are in the final session. This will be a very active session. Because we are turning the last session into an evil altar breaking prayer session. So I want to end this meeting with a different type of intensity. Many of you, you know what these altars have done to you. The delays they have caused. The divorces they have caused. The bankruptcies they have caused. You. What if you had an opportunity to shut them down? Shut them real good. You're not going to be proper. You're going to be violent in the spirit. Because it's time to end this. And begin a new era. Of breakthrough. Of breakthrough. In your life. So. The last. This session. You are going to be like me. You are not going to be seated. Because it's going to be very active. Every point I'll give you. We'll go into prayer. And then we'll pray. Everything I tell you. Is going to be destroying altars like that. Because why Dr. Mouse? Satan never made anything. Including the altar. So he, he has to live under the same laws of the altar that God designed. When you know the 12 laws of the altar and then you reverse them, that's how you destroy altars. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can we turn this into a prayer meeting? Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Are you catching what I'm saying? I want you to have a militant stand. I want your hands to be free. Because we're going to begin to pray now. Amen. One thing I love about Nigerians, that's why. Come on, Nigerians. I love preaching there. You know, we are so ashamed even though we are in suffering and poverty. 
we, we suffer we, we suffer politely you are suffering you know people of God Nigerians when they know there is breakthrough near them everything you say Amen we receive do you know what do you know what that feels like when you are speaking to 20,000 But you guys were colonized by the British. Even in your suffering, you are British. God is about to deliver. God is about to deliver you. It looks like Bishop Lewela, all the Zambia and Nigerians are in Kitwe. Amen? Amen. But seriously. So what I'm going to do, because I want it to be on video so you can watch it anytime. I will be giving you the laws and the scripture that goes with the law. And then I'll create a prayer request out of it. Feel free to walk around if you want to. Come here. It doesn't matter. This is officially now a breaking altar prayer warfare meeting. Amen. And so in this one, don't try to write down my, any notes. Amen. Compliments of my YouTube channel. Amen. Amen. I, you see, I'm very smart. I just forced everybody to go and see my YouTube channel. <laughs> bishop, you saw what I did, eh? <laughs> the bishop says, I, I'm learning something here. Mm. What to do. But literally, you know, uh, you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Number one, it's completely free. But the teachings will change your life. So what we're going to do, because we don't want to waste time, people, uh -uh, I don't want to uh, mess with the intensity of what I need. I want the end to be proud. So when we open up the altar for healing the sick, We've already, we've already driven out so many spirits. So I don't want you worrying about what did he say? What can I write? Because you can always go back to my YouTube channel. Watch this entire service. Slow it down. Pause every time I speak. And you can write what you want to write. But right now, there's no time to write. There's just only time to receive and respond and pray. So here we go. Here we go. Now the altars we are going after are the altars in your father's and mother's house. Every house has altars. Believe me. Every bloodline has altars. Unless a Gideon has risen in the family to completely eliminate and fight the altars, every one of us does deal with altars. So let's do it. What I'm teaching you, pastors, ministers, you can use the same template to deliver anybody in the world from altars. So this is a template of deliverance. In real time. Number one. The first law of the altars. All altars. Ever said with me. All altars. Have a dedicated. Human attendant. Say it with me. All altars 
have a dedicated human attendant. That is the first law of the altar. The scripture that goes along with that is 1 Kings 13 verse 1 to 2. So now how do we use that, out, how that law to begin to destroy altars in our father's and mother's house? This is what I'm going to tell you. And that's why every time I give you a law, we go into warfare. So I'm hoping this will be about a one hour service or lesson because I want to spend about four to five minutes praying on each one. Breaking things. Then we're done. So all altars have a dedicated human attendant. There is no altar that has no human attendant. When an altar is robbed of a human attendant, if it is not destroyed, it goes to sleep. Until it's able to attract a human attendant. Then it can begin to speak again. So we're going to pray right now that everyone in your father's house, in your mother's house, or in your neighborhood around you who is attending to an altar that is, fi that is fighting against you will now be arrested by the Spirit. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we, su we arrest we suspend, we rebuke, we command every altar in my life, in, your li in my father's house, in my mother's house, everyone attending to an evil altar that is speaking against me, I arrest you in the spirit. I release the fire of God against the human attendant. In the name of Jesus, every human attendant who is keeping an altar alive in my family that is satanic, in the name of Jesus, I declare you are arrested. I release fire against you. Fire against that human attendant. In the name of Jesus, I command the earth. I command the earth to resist you. I command the earth to resist you. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, send the angels. Send the angels to arrest every attendant to an altar in my family. In the name of Jesus, everyone who's attending to an evil altar in my bloodline, in my neighborhood, that is speaking against me, I declare you are arrested. You are arrested in the name of Jesus. Fire! And it is fire against them. And it is fire against them in the name of Jesus. 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 Now say, uh, say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I step in the court of heaven and I bring a lawsuit against any human attendant to an evil altar in my life, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my neighborhood. Any human attendant attending to an altar that is fighting me I petition the courts of heaven to release fire against them. I, I petition the courts of heaven to send angels to arrest these human attendants to evil altars in my mother and father's house. I declare to this human attendant today you are fired. In the name of Jesus, give God a shout. Listen to me. 
These are dangerous prayers. If there is a human attendant in your bloodline who is keeping the altars alive, if they don't repent, I give them seven days. They will not be with us. They will not be with us. Seven days of grace. But the altar dies tonight. Listen to me. In the next few days, you are going to have to ask the Lord, should I go to this funeral? If the Lord tells you no, shout because he just delivered you. Seven days. And the acts of the Lord will begin to fall. Even in your neighborhood, there might be strange funerals that you are not supposed to go. You hear things like and your natural nature will be like you are never a neighbor. The angel of the Lord will slap you. Because was your deliverance. Law number two. Say it with me. Say it with me. All altars have a guiding or supervising spirit. Say with me. All altars have a guiding or supervising spirit. Where do we find this? Judges 6.25. So now, so when an altar has no supervising spirit, even attending to it is a powerless exercise because it's a supervising spirit that provides power and benefits. Right now, we are about to pray. Are you catching what I'm saying? We are about to pray. That God will begin to arrest every supervising spirit behind the altars in your father's house, but behind the altars in your mother's house. In the name of Jesus, let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we arrest, we bind every supervising spirit behind any evil altar that is speaking against us. We bind every supervising spirit every spirit that is guiding the witches every spirit that is guiding the witches we let us fire against the spirits in the name of jesus we arrest lord we arrest in the name of jesus every spirit every guiding spirit behind us behind the evil altar in the name of jesus he in the name of Jesus, spirit of poverty, spirit of bankruptcy, spirit of witchcraft, marine spirits, we arrest this supervising spirit by the name of the Lord. They cannot supervise their human attendants. They cannot supervise their human attendants. 
in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I step in the court of heaven and it is my testimony before the courts of heaven that earth, this world I live in, is not a world for spirits. It's illegal for spirits to operate in my world. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I petition the court of heaven to divorce every human attendant to the evil altars in my bloodline, to the supervising spirits. I ask, O oh God, that you bring confusion you bring enmity between the attendants and their supervising spirits even those who talk to snakes the snakes will bite them because the supervising spirit is being arrested is being cast out in the name of jesus lord you have raised me as a priest as a Gideon over my bloodline over my mother's house over my father's house and therefore it is my priestly duty in the name of Jesus to petition you God in the name of Jesus to arrest every supervising spirit to the altars in my bloodline spirits of witchcraft you are bound what are spirits you are bound spirits of confusion spirits of death spirits of suicide poverty spirits you are dead you are a band. I cast you out of my family. Now, give God a shout as a spirit man. Peter, bring my iPhone. Bring my iPhone. Number three. No number three. Are you ready? No number three. Are you ready? Say it with me. All altars are powered by the sacrifices of the human attendant who services the altar. Say with me. All altars are powered, are powered by the sacrifices, by the sacrifices of, the of the human attendant who services the altar. So we find that scripture in 2 Samuel 24 verse 24 to 25. What does this mean to us? What does this mean to us? It means therefore that every altar speaking against you in your bloodline is doing so from the energy of all the sacrifices that have been given to the altar by your, by your, by your, by your forefathers who have gone to these altars. That's why you notice everyone, you, every time you go to Shinganga, on a lower level, they will ask for the chicken. 
Then they will ask for the goat to die. But there are levels where that's not enough. And so they began to ask for blood, human blood. Money. Different things. While the altar receives that, it becomes strong by the sacrifice. That's, that's why in 1 Kings 13, when the man of God was sent to the altar at Bethel to judge it, here was the judgment. The altar shall split apart and the ashes shall be poured out. The ashes is the testimony. The altar has collected over time. Of the sacrifice that have been given to him. We are go but when an altar has no sacrifice, it loses power. We are about to pray now that every altar in your family will split apart. And the ashes will be poured out and blown away by the wind of the spirit. In other words, every sacrifice that is keeping the evil altars alive will be removed. Will be removed. That's why the altars will not be able to speak to you again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray right now. Let us pray for the altars to split apart and for the ashes to be poured out. Pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare that every sacrifice, every sacrifice, my forefathers on my mother's side, on my father's side, gave to the altars to give them a voice. I declare that today every altar must split apart. Every altar must split apart. And the ashes must be poured out. The ashes, the ashes must be poured out and blown away by the wind of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus we starve every altar we starve every altar of sacrifice we starve every altar of sacrifice we starve every altar of sacrifice we starve every altar of any kind of sacrifice in the name of Jesus Come on, pray. Say, Heavenly Father, unrighteous judge, I step in the court of heaven and I petition you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, to starve, to starve every evil altar in my mother's house, in my father's house, starve it to death. Of any kind of sacrifice make it impossible for any human attendant to find any sacrifice human or otherwise to give to the evil altar starve it starve it in the name of Jesus 
I decree and declare there will be no sacrifice of this evil given to these evil altars in my father's house, in my mother's house, in the name of Jesus. Give God a shout. Law number four. Say with me, all attendants to an altar are fed by the altar they service. Say with me, all attendants to an altar are fed by the altar they service. The, the scripture that goes along with this is 1 Corinthians 9 verse 13. But, but then what does this mean to you? What does this mean to you in terms of dealing with evil altars in your family? The reason people even in your family Save these evil altars. It's because they are getting something from it. Witches don't just love witchcraft. They like witchcraft because they get something from it. What if they what if we make them work for free? That no matter how many times they come to the altar. It can give them money. It can give them power. How long do you think they're going to be witches? Never die. 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 He told the 450 prophets, put a bull there, build the altar, and let's talk to the God who answers by fire. You know what he did? He separated them. You know why they accepted the challenge? Because producing fire by witchcraft was not new. They had already done it. That's why they accepted. They didn't know Elijah had gone one step and had already arrested the supervising spirit. So they talked to Baal. They chanted. When they realized nothing was happening, they said, maybe the altar needs more food. So they took their own knives, began to cut because they thought maybe I left a more blood. And nothing was given to them. The altar that used to provide failed to provide. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Are you catching what I'm saying? That every attendant to witchcraft in your family. Who we'll start, we'll start looking for a new job? Because <laughs> you How long can you keep being a witch when your altar never provides? Because the children of God have silenced the altar from providing. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. That every evil altar in your mother and father's house will stop providing for any witch. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare and declare by the authority of the name of Jesus that every evil altar in our family, in our mother's house, 
we refuse will not be able to provide for the attendance not money not power not influence it will not be able to provide will not be able to provide for the human attendance in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Woo. now say with me say Heavenly Father as a priest in the order of Melchizedek I take my authority before the courts of the Lord and I petition you in the name of Jesus for a divine restraining order against any evil altar in my family will not be able from today we will not be able to feed or provide for any human attendant the witches in my bloodline will be looking for a new job in the name of Jesus give God a shout Number five. Say, law number five. Say with me, all altars are places of ritual. Say, all altars are places of ritual or repetitive activity. We find this in Hebrews 13, verse 9 to 10. What does that mean? It means the food of an altar is the ritual of the altar. That means an altar of poverty eats poverty. So the poverty therefore becomes a ritual. So if, you have, if, if there's an altar of poverty in your bloodline and you have money Money comes into your hands. That is not the food of the altar. So what the altar will do is eat your money. Because poverty can be sustained if the attendant is becoming rich. So the, the cycle of everyone in the family is money comes, money goes, but alomba because the altar's ritual is poverty. An altar of death as a ritual of death. Two years later, the altar must eat to keep the ritual going. Are you catching what I'm saying? We are going to pray. We are going to pray that today, today, God will destroy every repetitive pattern of evil in your life. If you are going from money to no money, or from joy to sadness, then joy again, then sadness. Whatever your rituals, whatever pattern you keep going through your family keeps going through it dies tonight it dies tonight and God is going to replace those evil patterns
by new patterns of righteousness. So if poverty was your pattern, ah, prosperity is about to be your pattern. If disfavor, if disfavor, do you know there are families where disfavor is their pattern? I want to give about ten more for for two days. Five days later, without even knowing, and they're even being humble. Ah, get out of my face! The pattern of this favor is bad. Favor is about to be your portion. You are about to have so much favor, you will be drunk with favor. You are about to have so much favor, you will be drunk with favor. Rituals. Let's pray right now that every ritual every cycle every pattern that is that is promoted that is promoted by evil altars must die tonight and then god must give you double for your trouble in the opposite direction let's pray in the name of jesus father we shut down every evil pattern we silence every evil cycle we silence every evil cycle i divorce your children from every evil cycle every evil ritual in the name of jesus i shut it down i shut it down Now, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me now. Everybody, say with me, Heavenly Father, righteous judge, I step in the court of heaven and I bring a lawsuit against every evil pattern every evil cycle i will no longer be an attendant to these evil cycles evil patterns in the name of jesus heavenly father i petition you in the name of jesus to destroy the, the demonic rhythm of these evil patterns in the name of Jesus it is my legal right as a citizen of the kingdom to go from glory to glory from faith to faith from light to light not from prosperity to poverty that is an illegal cycle in the kingdom so it must be arrested today i remove myself and my children from evil patterns evil cycles in the name of jesus give god a shout Oh God, law number six. Law number six. O altars speak. Say with me, O altars speak. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is time to silence the evil altar. 
We find this scripture in Acts chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. Acts chapter 10, verse 2 to 4. All altars speak. And so we are going to silence every altar. Every evil altar. We are going to declare that this evil altar will never speak to you again. Even in your dreams, they were not allowed to speak to you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we silence every evil altar by the blood of Jesus. We silence every evil altar in our father's house, in our mother's house. These altars cannot speak to us in the night, in the dreams. These altars cannot speak. Silence in the court. Silence in the court. with me now. Some of you have been having dreams about dead ancestors who are not in heaven. But they are appearing in your dreams. And the devil has been making it nice. That is the altar speaking. Trying to penetrate your, penetrate your defense system. But today, we are going to declare. You know altars. People have altars of failure that speak. They are, they are, whole, they are, in, they are, in, they are in grade 12. They have been studying very hard. They can actually pass. But on the day of the exam, the altar of failure speaks. Somebody comes and says, hey, I have found the answers to the exam. And even though they were ready for the exam, because the altar is speaking, in their stupidity, they take the answers. And while they are coping, the teacher finds out and says, oh, five years of your education is cancelled. And their failure when they could have passed without the stupid answers. Why did they take the stupid paper? Because the author was speaking. I'm here to prophesy. You are never going to hear from the altar of your father's house. You are never going to hear from the altars of your mother's house. That is why you are about to have a life better than all of them. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I step in the court of heaven as a priest in the order of Melchizedek it is my right to petition the courts of heaven to silence every evil altar in my father's house in my mother's house that has been speaking to me during the day during the night I said to these evil altars 
Silence in the court. Silence in the court. I'll never hear from you again. In the name of Jesus. Give God a shout. Law number seven. All altars are places of exchange. Say with me, all altars are places of exchange. We find this in Genesis 8, verse 20, verse 20 to 21. What does that mean for you? Because altars are places of exchange. The reason why some of you are struggling, prophets are saying you are supposed to be there, but you are there, is because when you are born or when you are young, some family member deceived by the devil went to a shrine and they exchange, they exchange their power for your star. So no matter what you do, you can't shine because your star has been captured by a shrine. But today, God is about to reverse the exchange. Ah, talk to me, somebody. Some of you are struggling because the life you are living now is not your life. It's not your life. Somebody went to a shrine and they exchanged their shadow for your shadow. But today, God will reverse it. God will reverse the exchange. Ah, hallelujah. Let us pray for God to reverse every evil exchange about your life. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every evil exchange about my life must be reversed. Every evil exchange around my life must be reversed. My star must come back. My anointing must come back. My future must come back. My days must come back. My beauty must come back. My health must come back. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every exchange made at an altar, every exchange about your life made at an altar, we reverse it. We reverse it. In the name of Jesus. Father, as a priest in the order of Melchizedek, I come before the court of heaven, I come before the 24 elders, and I say, Lord, an injustice was done to me even before I was born. While I was coming through the birth canal, when I was growing up. An injustice 
what has he done to me? Lord, you are a God of justice. You love justice. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, my star was captured. My future was captured. My health was exchanged for sickness. My finances were exchanged for poverty. Heavenly Father, by the blood of Jesus, I'm asking for a reversal. Reverse the exchange. It's an illegal exchange. I never signed on to it. So Heavenly Father, I ask you to reverse it. Turn around as God reverses every exchange. Every exchange that was made about your life. Turn around as God reverses every exchange that was made about your life. You have not suffered because you are not smart. Because you are not hardworking. Many of you have suffered because you have not been living your life. The people you are admiring, some of the people you are admiring in your family who seem to be doing well without Jesus, went to a shrine and the witch doctor looked in the constellation and realized they were nothing compared to you. So he told the, the witch doctor told them if you bring this sacrifice I will exchange our stuff for yours. So you have been admiring your life. But I'm here to tell somebody about to enter into your real life. A reversal has been made. A reversal has been made. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every exchange that was ever made about you or your children has been reversed. And the Lord says, for many of you, this will be the sign. Your children who have been doing poorly in school will become certain successes. Jesus. We are almost there. Can you feel the energy in this room? If anybody is sick, I'll get my healing right now. If you are sick in your body, put one hand on your body. Lift the other hand to God. Because the reversal has been made. Some of you, somebody exchanged your health. Put sickness on you. They exchanged your health. But today, the reversal has happened. The sickness will leave you. And the health will return. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. I'm going to pray for healing in your body. In Jesus' name. 
when the pain disappears or when you can begin to do what you couldn't do before just walk to the altar to testify because power is in the house so father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I stand in the office of a healing evangelist and I command every spirit of infirmity go every spirit of infirmity go tumors disappear growths disappear in the name of Jesus ringing in the ears somebody has got she that's ringing in the ears go got some guts ringing in the ears God just healed you somebody couldn't hear on your left side God just healed your left ear right now in the name of Jesus pain in your bo- in your legs begin to do what you couldn't do before the pain just left you right now in the name of Jesus if you couldn't bend, bend if you couldn't walk, walk in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus cataract in the eyes just got healed cataract in the eyes just got healed when you came in your vision was hazy watch God take off your glasses some of you and you see clearly God is healing people right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus an asthmatic condition just got healed Jesus somebody with asthma begin to breathe in and out you're going to find out that your chest is so clear in Jesus name. Somebody will see that pain in your back. Begin to do, begin to do this, and you're gonna find that the pain is no more there in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. What a healing, Jesus, you are. Shaka terebo shata. Shike terebe shata. If you came with pain and the pain just left you, just walk over to the altar. And as you do, there'll be nothing left of the pain as you get close to the altar. God is healing you right now. I am the Lord that he led me. I am the Lord, your healer. I send my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord. I am the Lord that I am the Who came with pain and the pain just left you? What's your name? What happened to you? My name is Mraro. I've had a pain since this morning, starting from the top of my head. To my heels. 
But now it's gone. Now it's completely gone. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Who else came with pain in your body? What happened to you, brother? What's your name and what happened to you? You've been suffering from this leg problem about seven years. What happened? It just started. Just started? Yes. Okay. How do you feel now? I feel better now. There's no pain. There is no pain. Yes. Seven years of pain gone. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Who else had pain in your body and just left? My sister in a green dress. What is your name? What's, up? What's happening to you? My name is Elizabeth. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. What's happening? Now? The Lord just touched you. So your mother was asthmatic, and it's been difficult to breathe as well. And the Lord just healed you. Touch. It's gone. Yes. What leg? What, 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 what knee? Come on, do this, do this. There is no pain. There is no pain. There is no... You don't, you don't hold the mic away from when I'm talking to somebody. There is no pain. Somebody, isn't, isn't the Lord amazing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen. Amen. I know the healing anointing is we're coming back for the healing services in the crusade. But everybody stretch your hands towards them because these sicknesses are gone forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, it is over. Sickness comes to an end. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering. Now go and sit down. Because remember, it's already started. We have not yet, we are going to raise an altar, to a new altar. In the next 15 minutes, we'll be finished with the whole service. There are two things we need to deal with, then we're done with dealing with the altars. Please stand up again. Stand up again. Let's finish it. So now we are going to deal with three things at the same time. And then, and then we, because I want to now bring the service to an end. And then we'll raise a new altar in your life. That speakers. It is so sad. That speakers. It is so sad. It means your altar will be speaking so loudly. That things that used to take months or years will take days. But I want to do, so I'm going to combine three things together in one. I'll give you three laws. And then we'll go in the court of heaven over the three laws. And we end there because we want to make sure that the altars of our mother and father's house will never rise again. So with me, all altars. So law number eight is all altars are places of covenant. Say all altars are places of covenant. We find this in Genesis 22, verse 9 to 18. What does this mean to you? It means the altars of your mother and father's house are not just supported by sacrifice. They are supported by Agreements. They are supported by, by covenants. So we are going to ask the Lord 
to destroy every covenant, every evil agreement that is attached to any evil altar in your mother or father's heart. Someone say amen. amen. Law number nine. Say with me, O altars, can you hear? O altars, can you hear? Uh, we find this in 1 Kings 13, verse 2. So we are going to petition the Lord. We are going to petition the Lord to not only to silence the evil altars, but to make them deep. That the evil altars in your father's house will never hear your voice again. So that even when you are saying, I'm going to be blessed, my company is about to make money. In the past, just after you testify, that's when everything began to fall down. What happened? Because when you were testifying, the evil altar was awakened. And he said, you, I won't let you succeed. I won't let that testimony start. But in the next few minutes, no matter how much you testify, no evil altar in your mother will ever hear you. Your testimonies belong to the Lord and only to the Lord. The last one. Say with me, O altars. Say, O altars. Either have God or an idol that is worshipped on the altar. Say with me, O altars, o altars either, have God, either have God or an idol, or an idol that is worshipped on, on the altar. Where do we find this? Genesis 12, verse 7. Verse 1 Kings 11, verse 7. Verse 7. What does this mean to you? Satan.
Now pray. Pray this prayer with me. This is our last prayer now. Say, Heavenly Father, unrighteous judge, I step once more in the courts of heaven before the ancient of days.
media team. Now we must raise an altar that speakers. So you me with one more last scripture. And then if, even for those who have brought your offerings already and those who need some of you brought your offering. I heard the Lord tell me some did not give what I told them. Please don't do that. Not tonight. You will be because tonight the Lord says if you don't give the sacrifice that I told you you shall be like King Jehoshaphat who did not know that when he was, when he was talking to Elisha who was a spiritual father that will be the last meeting what did he go to ask my father my father the Syrians are giving me problems I can't, I can't govern the country if I'm at war every year and the man of God said behold he said take an arrow and strike the ground and Jehoshaphat have heartedly struck the ground three times and the prophet was angry he said you are foolish why did you strike the ground three times for beyond these are the arrows of the Lord's deliverance because you have struck the ground three times you only win three times but it should have taken six to seven victories for you to put Syria to rest forever that's the danger of half half half-hearted sacrifice in the moment of Kairos when all the stars have lined up for your rising and God says give me a sacrifice I've asked you to give me so when I finish reading this before we raise the altar some of you are going to come back and get your offering because God would have told you what you put in there is not what I told you. Tonight is your night where everything changes. Don't be embarrassed because we don't live for men, we live for God. In 1990, people ask me, how did you end up in America? I was a struggling but anointed preacher. Pastor Mutonga knows that. Please take your seat just for a few seconds. When we stand up, we're going to be coming to raise an altar. And then we're going to be looking forward for an amazing day to finish it tomorrow. I was I had a Zimbabwean for a prayer partner in Pretoria. We used to pray together a lot of times. We are both we are both on fire but struggling financially. One day he calls me desperate. Dr. Miles, my brother. My mother in Bulawayo is dying. Dying. And they say she's only got five hours to live. And she's holding on to dear life. Because she keeps asking, when is my firstborn coming to close my eyes? 
I've never seen him cry before he was crying. He said, man of God, it could not have happened at the worst of time. I have no money to get there by plane. Because driving to Bulawayo should be long dead by the time I arrive. There is a South African Airways flight going to Bulawayo. And the price was only $140. Round three. I never forget it, Bishop, as long as I live. 1996. I Not a giver. I've never seen a man fight so hard not to be a giver like I fought that day. Lord, I'm the prophet, not the giver. It's not fair, I can't be the prophet. I didn't be the giver. Surely you can raise another. The voice became louder. Thou art a man. Thou art a man. Then I became depressed. And then he says to me, Francis, 
How much do you have in your account right now? Hired in runs exactly the equivalent of $100 plus some change was simple. I laugh now but at the time it took about a year to save that money. Where I'm coming from, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Finally, because I always wanted to obey God, this has been my Hercules heel, the desire to obey. After I, after I fought for my little money in the account, I speak, I, but once it's clear, Almighty God, fear was in my heart. I was shaking, but I knew this must be done. So, those who say God loves a cheerful giver, I've never really walked with God. That's scriptures God gives you when you are young. <laughs> but when he knows you have grown, that scripture disappears. Because at the highest level, God can deal with miserable givers who obey. I was a miserable giver that day. And I took my pain, shaking. I began to write the Zimbabwean's name. And as I began to write, the first time in my life, the Shekinah glory walked in the room. I had read about it. Visualized it. Never understood what Shekinah is. It was heavy. I began to buckle. It was a thick cloud. <laughs> oh, fear left me. I'm shaking, I'm riding. I'm going down. It's so heavy. Then a portal opens up. Shh. And I see on the other side me at a different time in my future. I'm standing on the most cold bridge. It was a massive bridge. I looked in front of the bridge. Water everywhere. And at the end of the bridge, tall buildings I'd never seen anywhere in the world. And then I heard the voice. My son, because you have obeyed me in this, you have made a bridge between South Africa and the country of your ultimate calling. I didn't know what it was. And the port of clothes. I called the Zimbabwean. Come here, brother. Your money is waiting. He says, you just come. Before I change my mind, just come. The Zimbabwean was a prophetic anointed collector. In a short time, he was there to collect. He took the money and everything I prophesied happened to the T. With his mother before she passed. And then one year later, in South Africa, South Africa, we are at a meeting with all white people, different kind of people, pastors. 
and this great man of God in South Africa comes to me. There are so many people. At that time, I look like Stephen. That was before I became Americanized. I was so thin. He came to me and says, Young man, what's your name? Okay. Francis, tell me more about yourself. And I'm like, this man of God wants to talk to me. But he did. Then other people surrounded him. They took him away. Before the meeting. Was gone. Was he finished? He comes to me. The whole dinner was about this man. He said to me, young man, I need your number. I'm thinking, why does this man of God need my number? He knows me. Except my fellow Zambians from Chimoy. But I gave him my number. Ashton, this is my miracle. Two days later, we get a phone call. I had about four white people that used to travel with me in South Africa at the time. I've always had favor with white people. I was broke, but they liked me. <laughs> so they used to travel with me. So one of them was She got the phone call. Hello, we are calling on behalf of Apostle, and they said it. He wants to talk to Francis. Phone, I gave them the phone of my secretary. So she received it. But I was with her. The apostle.
I said, oh no, I'll go with you. So we begin to drive. Bishop, he drives. And then he gets on the bridge. What I'll now discover was called the Brooklyn Bridge. When his car, when his car went towards it, I said, stop! So the reverend, what is this bridge? He said, what is this reverend? What is this bridge? He said, it's the New York Bridge. It connects Brooklyn to Manhattan. I said, sir, I have been on this bridge. I have been on this bridge. He parked on the side. I got out. I went on the Brooklyn Bridge. And looking ahead of me was every tall building I saw exactly. I looked to the left and to the right. A sea of water. And then I heard God. Francis. Was your altar into a new nation? He says, Look around you. I have called you to. In the days to come, your voice will be known from coast to coast, east to west. And I can tell you by the special grace of God, today, that is true. From coast to coast. Tonight, when we come to raise a new altar, to transition you into this new season of favor where you won't have to fight the evil altars of your mothers and fathers you cannot come empty handed for altars are raised by sacrifice so I read the final scripture and then we are going to all stand up to bring, if you didn't, if you're only coming now, if you're only coming now, and you did not hear about the sacrificial offering to raise a new altar, what I'm speaking, you can come over and collect an offering envelope from my hands and get ready to do whatever the Lord tells you. But subtitle Second Samuel twenty-four. Those who are watching us on YouTube do the same. There is a scrolling how to give lower third on the live feed. Ask the Lord. What is the offering? What is the sacrifice? You want from me to raise a new altar for a new season. So 2 Samuel 24 verse 11. New King James Version and Titus do it quickly please. I hope you are not still not frozen. 2 Samuel 24 from verse 11. I'm going to read it to verse 25. I'm going to read it by myself. Don't have to follow me. I'll read it by myself. Now when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God. David see us saying, Go and tell David. That says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself that I may do it to you. So God came to David and told him and he said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or shall you, shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days plague in your land? 
Now consider and see what answer I should take back to him who sent me. And David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time. From Dan to Bathsheba, 70,000 men of the people died. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, it is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aranua the Jebusite. In other words, the angel stopped at the threshing floor of Aranua. That means behind him there was nothing but blood. So God could use anything behind him. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people. And said, surely I have sinned. And have done wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be against me and against my father's house. And God came that day to David and said to him, Go up. Here's the solution. It's always the solution when you are transitioning from one realm of plague, one realm of trouble, to another realm of power. And every time there is a transition in the kingdom, an altar must be raised. <laughs> The man you see before you have had several altars. And I know all the names of my altars at different points of transition. Today you are in the valley of transition to enter a season of breakthrough like you have never known. God be my witness. So David, David said, go up and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aranua the Jebusite. The Lord went up as the Lord commanded. Now Aranua looked and saw the king and his servants coming towards him. So Aranua went out and bowed before Ranua said, why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, to buy the threshing floor from you, to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be withdrawn from the people. Altars are raised to end seasons of plague, seasons of trouble. Whatever seems good to him. Look, here are oxen for burnt sacrifice and threshing implements.
sacrifice now is, is in five figures. One day it will be six figures. Because God reacts to your level. When Pastor Benny Hinn came to speak for me in Atlanta, Georgia, Bishop Tudor Bismarck and I were sitting next to each other. And Pastor Benny Hinn was speaking. First and foremost, I couldn't believe Benny Hinn was speaking for me. How far we have come. But then the testimony said, I knew I was not in his level, but Pastor. When he spoke, me and Bishop Tudor Bismarck said, We did this. Ah, we are st- we, Bishop Bismarck is so funny. He's like, Ah, Francis, we still have a long way to go. <laughs> Benny said, There was a time in the early 90s when his TV budget TV budget every month was 10 million US dollars. 10 million US dollars. Yes, Bishop, that's what we said. Oh, whoa. So every month Benin Ministries had a 40 million dollar bill for just television. 40 million dollars. So they said that week his secretary, his finance, his accountant called him. Pastor Benny, we are in trouble. We are not going to pay the television station this month, this week. We are behind. Money is so low. You have to shut it down or, or find some credit. He said, how much do we have? Just over one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he said whoa what should I do he said two days after they told him that Renard Bonke calls because Renard Bonke and Benin were very very close Bonke calls he says Benin I'm going to Nigeria I'm going to be speaking to one million people. But I need money. <laughs> Benny says, I said, Bonky, how much do you need? Brother, I just need one million dollars. One million dollars. Some, can you imagine to our friends, you can even ask a million dollars. That was Bonky. <laughs> Brother Benny, God told me he will give me one million dollars. <laughs> he says, Bonky, I'm over one Bonky for Baba. Brother, Brother Benny, you say you have one million and you have 1.2 million. I only need one million. <laughs> Ah, Pastor Benny was, we were laughing at eh? So he said, okay, but so Benny said, I called my accountant. So we, there's no way for us to pay the television bill. Just no way. It's, he says, okay, send a million dollars right now to Renard Banke. He needs to go to Nigeria. And Benny Hinn ministers what? A million dollars. To Renard Bank. And they remain with 200,000. And then Benny says, I started sweating bullets. Friday was coming. He says, Out of the blue, the great Oro Roberts passed through the studio. And Benny says, Oh, it was. I said, so I said, Benny said, I get this sh- a live show. I said to him, I said, Oro, I'm in trouble. I need $10 million by Friday. This was Wednesday. By Friday, 
Can you, can you come on my show and raise an offering for me? And then he said, all of said, okay. I'll come. So they go on his show. This is your day. And Bonky uh, and he said, he said, he said, Oro is just talking. I'm trying to show him some signs. Like Oro, we've only got so minutes left. 25 minutes, he's just talking. Now I'm sweating. I send him a paper across the TV. It's three minutes left. Oro kept talking. And then he stopped. When there was two minutes left, two minutes, and I looked in the camera. He says, Ben, he said, I thought he was going to give people numbers. Hey, Ben, he needs $10 million or whatever, give it to him. He says, he never mentioned one number. He said, he spoke for 30 seconds. He says, people, this is Oro. Ben is in trouble. Ben is in real trouble. Help him. Ben says, I turned red. I was so angry. I'm like, Do you know, you know, I'm like, you won't tell them the number. He just he was quiet. Finally, the TV gave us a sign. We, we are off. It was live TV. Said, it was over. I said, I turned to Oro. I said, Oro. Why didn't you tell them I need $10 million? You just say I'm in trouble. He said, Benny, that's what God taught me. Are you not in trouble? <laughs> he says, are you not in trouble? He says, yes, I'm in trouble. But $10 million trouble. He says, it's still trouble to me. And he says he left because at that time he, was, he had retired. He was in California. He says the phone began to ring. A Muslim man was watching and, and made a phone call. He said, I heard what that man said. A Muslim man sent him $10 million. And then more, and other people send him $1 million. By Friday, he, was, he had over $20 million in the bank. Wow. And everybody just thinks these people were anointed. Like Ben Hinn don't have to still obey the law of the altar. It's not true. It is time for you to obey the Lord. So whatever the Lord has told you, two envelopes. There's a song Bishop Skybanda used to like. Where in his honor, we're going to sing it, but that's going to be the song for you to come to the altar. Even though you have been to the altar, if your envelope, I want, if your envelope is here, I want you to be the first people to come because you need to come and kneel before the altar. And then I'm going to bless you and a new altar will be raised. If God has convicted you and you need to double or treble what you are trying to give, because the Lord has told you the right number you can come but anybody else don't come except the people already have envelopes here then those who still have to give I'll get to you there's a reason I'm doing this Savior do not pass me by Stephen you know it Lead, you know what I Lead it. Thank you, Jesus. Savior. Yeah. Savior. Do not pass me by. Come on, guys, get involved. Jesus. Wow. 
no nada estaba tú oh you know you know pass me I say there is room. Now everybody have got an envelope. You can kneel around the altar. I know it's hard flow, but do something, but it's before the Lord your God. The Lord says the altar is now open. Angels are touching people. And in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, you are going to remember tonight for as long as you live. They are people, they are mothers, fathers who have been worried. Yeah. But there is no job. Tonight, you just fix that. Because of the order you raised today. The Lord says, watch me take care of your children. Please speak in English whenever I speak in in Bem. Now Bakula, but they have grown and yet they don't have anyone to marry them. That ends tonight. No. That ends tonight. If you have for God is going to set you free. What is about to happen next, you will know that the Lord and his prophet was here. For the Lord has made me tonight like unto Samuel for you. The word of the Lord will not fall to the ground. I'm a business. Any business that doesn't grow, it ends tonight. For today, the Lord says, I will cause the laws of lifting to work for my people who have honored me tonight with sacrifice. Church, no matter how much you pray, it does not grow. It ends now. You'll be looking for more chairs every Sunday. That saith the Lord. Marriage, you enjoy. 
Every time it's arguments, striving, or no money, always at loggerheads with your spouse. The Lord says, it ends tonight. For I'm sending a new romance between husband and wives. And I'm even cutting off the evil woman. The evil mistress. She will dry up like a plant in the desert, says the Lord. That saith the Lord. Somebody has been asking God for one more child. Somebody has been saying, Lord, just one. God says, have I not opened your womb like Anna tonight? And there is a mother. Your daughter is married. But it's because there is no fruit of the womb. Hear the Lord. If Francis Mouse be a prophet of God, by next year this time you'll be holding your grandbaby from that child that's the word of the Lord that's the word of the Lord many of you your health is failing but God says watch me as you raise this new altar, what me rejuvenate your body and remove sickness from the midst of you. In the name of Jesus. But the Ashton God is healing your body. You didn't tell me anything, but God is healing your body. The name of Jesus. There is a fresh anointing that is coming. Those which were closed in your face are now opening in the name of Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Now you're going to pray with me and then leave your offering. If you haven't put your offering yet, I'm going to pray with me. When I pray with you, then if your offering is already on the altar, you will stand up and go back onto your seat so others can come and bring their envelope onto the altar in Jesus name please pray this prayer after me all of you say heavenly father today on my knees as I stand before the altar as I cry before the altar I'm asking that a new altar be raised let this sacrifice I bring before you be a sweet smelling savor in your nostrils and raise me an altar that speaketh. An altar that has got stature before you. An altar that can speak in the heavenly realm for me. An altar that can pay my bills in my house. An altar that can fight the battles in my house. An altar that can sustain the blessing of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you that today on this altar, this is for me the house 
of a run world where our, an altar is being raised that will silence every plague that has come against me and my family. A new day, a fresh wind arrives in my life in the name of Jesus. I bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. And today, at this moment, a new altar is raised in Jesus' name. Give God a shout. I know you're still standing. You are, you are still in. Hallelujah. Give God a shout. So if your offering is already here, live and begin to go to your to your and those who have not brought their offering to the altar, please come. To stand up. I'm going to do one final thing. We're going to celebrate. We're going to end the night in style. The name of Jesus. So, Titus, are we ready?
One of Pastor Nathaniel's favorite songs, which I, one of my favorite songs. Thank you, Mama. You see, people, God is talking to people to raise their sacrifice. It's only the Lord who does it. See, there is no manipulation in my ministry at all because of the means of the Spirit. You know why people manipulate, you know why preachers manipulate people? Are you listening to me? Don't get lost. Or you saw your wife and you got caught up seeing your wife. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, I forgive you then. But I was saying, do you know why some preachers manipulate people? For Number one, because they're asking people to do what they don't do. So they lack legitimacy in the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Because you can't ask people to do what you have not done. Number one. Number two, they ask people. They manipulate people financially. Because they are so desperate for money. Because they have not yet achieved mastery. Over what they are commanding. They need it. I got delivered from a long time ago. I've been in places where I preached and they gave me a good offering and God said, give it back. It's okay. It's okay. It's just because it's all God for me. But this is the Lord. So we are going to, I'm going to have two elder ministries, Bishop and Lemuela, to represent the body of Christ because the new level of finance is coming to the church in Kitwe and the Copper Belt. You are going, you are going to raise the two buckets to the Lord and we, as the song plays, it's about to play, as we all worship the Lord, as fathers represent the body of Christ, you will wave those baskets before the Lord. The song by Nathaniel Basel is called Look What the Lord Has Done. Play it, please. With all of us, let's just celebrate. This is the last thing we do for Jesus today. All right. Lift it up, please. Everybody sing it. You know the songs. Sing it along. See what the Lord has. Come on, Kitwe. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord Come on, people. Let's go. See. Come on now. Hallelujah. Sing it for your children. Sing it for your marriage. Sing it for yourself. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done in Kitwe. Our ears have heard. What we waited for at Maranatha. 
what we wait for in Copperbell. See what the Lord has done in my life. Has come. Take it over, take it over. See what the Lord has done. And keep way in the copper bell. What we waited for. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass in my lifetime, in Kitway, in the life of my children. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Where that for has come to pass in Kitwe, in the copper belt, in your marriage, in your life, in your children's life. See what the Lord has done. What is done? Elders, the elders of the people lift, the, lift up to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as I closed this session of divine encounter, as I close this session of divine encounter, I say, look at the elders of the church. 
as you said to Moses, let the elders of Israel wave the offering of the people before me that I may be glorified among the nations. Lord, they are waving the sacrifices of your children. We now lift up the fragrance of the sacrifice to you, O oh God, that glory may be ascribed to your name. And Lord, reward your people in accordance to the fragrance of their sacrifice. Let them know in the next few days that there is a God in heaven and you have done it again. Lift their lives. Change everything. And give them perfect attendance to the altar. That their hunger to live by the altar will come up on your children. The fire on the altar will never, 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 never run out. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise. And the church said, Amen. And give Jesus a shout. You may be seated for a moment. I know it's 2014. Sometimes we don't control what God wants to do. We are mindful that tomorrow is Sunday. We will all go to various churches. But at 14 hours, as soon as Maranatha finishes their last service, we will come and finish our session from 14 to 20 hours. And all those that have not had the chance to participate in raising the altar, we'll ask them We'll give them the envelopes. And tomorrow night, we'll raise again, give an opportunity to those that have not had a chance tonight. Amen. 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 We'll ask my dear reverend to come and close in a word of prayer. Come. Uh, please, as we go, uh, tonight the altar starts speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell your neighbor tonight the altar is speaking. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's be upstanding as we close in a word of prayer. The Lord bless you and we'll see you in the afternoon tomorrow. By the grace of God, Dr. Francis has been given an opportunity to share with Maranatha tomorrow morning. Uh, he's going to bless the church. And then in the afternoon, he'll join us. Let us pray. Father, we bow our heads before thee. Jehovah God Almighty, what an awesome Father, source of life, source of grace, source of love. Look at how you've poured into our hearts through your servant, Jehovah God Almighty. We pray and lift him up in your hands that Father, what he has given, you replenish. Father, we thank you and bless your holy name as we lift him up in your hands, as we lift up his wife in your hands that you continue using these servants of yours 
Jehovah God Almighty, this is a life we had seen even when he was beginning his ministry. We have seen your faithfulness. We have seen your goodness. We have seen that you are a faithful God and you bring to pass that which you promise. Continue watching over your servant. Continue surrounding him with your tender mercies. Continue going before him wherever you take him. And continue Jehovah God Almighty lifting up as a person that lifts up the banner of our nation Zambia. We thank you and we bless your holy name. We thank you Father for our oh God the bishop here and all the bishops that have been here. Part of this process that you continue using them tremendously and gloriously. We pray, Jehovah God Almighty, that you watch over every minister of the gospel that is here in attendance, that, Father, you watch over them as prophetic words have been released in our lives that will come to see that which has been spoken into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, that which has been spoken of our ministries in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless your holy name that you bless every one of us as we travel to our different places. Lord, let your angels encamp around us to protect us from all manner of evil. And bring us again tomorrow together to see how you finish him with us to the glory and honor of your holy name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Shalom, shalom. See you tomorrow in the afternoon. Greet somebody and say thank you.